You know, I learned today while driving my brand new Bentley GT Speed. This is a 22 Bentley GT Speed. But my video guy today taught me something really interesting. He said white girls would pound anyone for coke. Now, why'd you say that, Reggie? Why are you laughing? <laughs> Come on, man, why are you laughing? Man up to it. Man up to it, you know it. You know that's what you said. So, you know, I, I don't know. We can't really test out this theory or anything because he seems to have a lot of experience with this. I, you know, I'm a good uh, law-abiding citizen. I don't know nothing about no Coke and I know nothing about no white girls doing nothing for Coke. Today, we have to actually wear masks. Oh, uh, that's not a mask. That's from, yeah, that's from last night. I'm sorry. So just saying. But today we're actually reviewing my Bentley GT Speed and sorry we got completely out of hand here. Uh, what we're actually talking about is how one, there's no way you can have sex in these back seats. It's completely like way too tiny. And two, this is probably one of the best all around supercars on the road. And that says a lot for being a Bentley because Bentleys are notorious with you know, just thinking they're better than other cars, but really underperforming in every possible way. I mean, Bentley's not fun to drive. They're for old people. They drove like terrible. I've had like 20 of them. Uh, they look kind of cool and they had a status thing going for them, but they, they weren't that exciting looking. The tech was ancient and stupid. And the design on the interior, while it had some cool features, was very, very boring at best. And their color choices were also incredibly conservative. So what has changed? Well, we're gonna take a look at this today uh, in our review of my new 22 uh, Bentley GT Speed convertible. And we're gonna also talk about what made me be willing to spend $380,000 on a Bentley when we historically know that they drop like rocks, right? Every Bentley before has dropped for, I mean, I can't even say probably like 40% of their worth in the first like two years, which is bonkers, right? And today we're talking about me spending almost $400,000 buying a brand new one uh, without even flinching. So what has changed or not? And while we get to our location here where we're gonna take a look at the car, et cetera, I wanna point out something about the driving, which is spectacular. So this is the new GT Speed, which has the rear wheel steering. Uh, and, and as you'll see from the design, it has like every possible option with the new 22s and everything. This car drives spectacular. And while it sits up like a bus, which we're gonna fix that, if you know me, I mod everything, but it still drives very planted in the sense that you don't feel like you're sitting in a bus versus my new Rolls, which we'll review next time. You really feel like you're sitting in a bus and like on a boat or something and you're just floating away. But with this car, you really feel the drive and the excitement of the drive really uh, is something we've never, ever, ever seen from Bentley, not even on the old Supersport, the one that was meant to be the driver's crazy car that was like 700 horsepower. And yet this drives spectacularly better. And, and we're gonna talk about that in just a moment. Now, I wanna point you to some, uh, I wanna point you to some little details on the inside of the car, because we're here driving and I think they, they make a difference here. So I wanna point you to these details while we're in the car. You'll notice that the fit and finish in this car, I mean, is top, top notch, right? I mean, unbelievable, like nuts. From these little pieces around the vents to being these like hard and beautiful, I mean, it, I mean, it just comes together so well. It's impossible to think, I'm gonna stop over here for a second. It's impossible to think that someone other than Bentley could do this because it is just superb. The buttons feel strong, the door handles feel good, the quilting, the stitching, the Alcantara meeting, the, 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 just this pattern here, like to die for, right? And then the best part is, let's talk about the tech for a second. So you have all these buttons, nothing who gives a shit, it does everything every other car does. But I want to point you to this tech. One first off, look at this. So this is cool as hell, look at that. And there you go, now you have a, a real driver's experience, right? Super cool. But let's say, you're back to the tech. Why does this screen look so familiar? Well, because if you remember my review of my 992 Turbo S, 
it was the exact same interface. And this is where you can truly see the Porsche influence on the car. The tech is went from being non-existent to being Porsche existent, which is above all other exotics because of its functionality, its practicality, and it's spectacular. It just works so well. So you take Porsche tech, you take Bentley craftsmanship, which has always been very high, I've always spoken highly of that, and you take this mix of modern and exciting new design, and you blend the drive from functional driver's car to beautiful, exciting, exotic car, and you get this. And this is just the interior. Now wait till I show you how hot this looks on the outside. It is absolutely, absolutely insane. And, and it's quickly becoming one of my favorite cars, and I'm pretty sure once I mod it, it will be my favorite car. So I'm gonna show you, we're gonna go outside. Let's take a look at this car together and see why I thought this was worth $400 thousand dollars okay let's go outside all right so let's take a look at the most incredible new Bentley GT on the market the 22 GT speed Right away, you'll notice it looks almost identical to the old Bentley. There's no significant difference except for really the interior because all the other options, minus the wheels, have been available on the regular Bentley GT, which was a superb car for quite some time. So right away, you'll just notice <clears throat> the speed logos here, the new style 22 inch wheels, which are fantastic looking, I think. You'll see the interior here at a glance with all this sparkly and beautiful two-tone Alcantara finish for the speed. And you'll see this body kit running across the side here, the carbon fiber. But historically, that was also available on the non-speed. So does this car really have something significantly different from a base model V8 other than the interior? And the short of it is not really. I mean, you're getting things like the black line, which is something specific to this now, which you're getting black grills. You're getting the black accents here around the headlights, which are, I mean, look at these headlights. They are unbelievable. Like you can see the, just the design is just mind blowing. But <clears throat> I think that part of the reason why GT speeds will feel better than the base GTs on the surface when you look at them is because I assume that most GT speed owners will spec things like the body kit, the black line, and then of course these newer wheels which will give it a very different look. And I think as a result of that, you'll automatically associate that with your head with this new kind of like the speed model when really this was available on the V8, on the previous V8 and the W12 that came out to begin with. So, so nothing really special here. I mean, on the surface, other than you're getting more power, you're getting rear wheel steering, as I said, which makes a significant difference in drive and you get this new design. Now this color is brand new for the speed and it's magnificent. I mean, this is like a Nardo gray that just hits really, really hard, which was one of the reasons I decided to buy it. I mean, look at it. It's just glorious. The tech is fantastic. The design is second to none. I mean, it is beautiful. And once it's lowered and you lose this, this little thing going on here where you can fit an entire fist, get it? You can fist the car. So we call this terrible. But once you lower it and put spacers on it, it's gonna have a very balanced look. And I think it's gonna really make it a, a true GT. Now, this is really what it comes down to. Now, I've always said for a long time that Porsches, while they are sports cars, in convertible format, act more like daily driver GTs and with, with a little bit of fun, you know, when you take them on the weekend. And I feel like what Bentley has done teaming up with Porsche on this is that they have basically created the same thing here for the Bentley GT Speed with more luxury, more excitement, and honestly, a much better design. So why do I think that the new Bentley GT is worth $380,000, or why do I think that's a good idea? So first off, I don't think it's a good idea, and historically, this is probably exposed just about 10 to 15% over the next 12 months. But there are a few reasons why I feel very differently about the new Bentley than I did about the previous Bentleys. And the reason for that is just what we talked about, and it's kind of the Porsche effect. When a, cons when a manufacturer creates a really good product, it gets enough demand for it where people are willing to spend money for it. Now, 
If you look at where we are in the world of cars where G, like Turbo S's are selling for 100K over, I would ask you this, would you buy this for 350,000 or would you buy 911 Turbo S for 300? And to me, I would take this all day, every day. And I think there's gonna be a market out there that would agree with me once they try this car. I think the only thing Bentley basically has going against it when it comes to values is that it's always been perceived that way as a failing value car. No different than Rolls Royce, which has also changed his image a lot throughout the COVID pandemic with the Wraith and the Dawn coming back to sticker and the new Black Badge Ghost barely being discounted off of sticker. So if you have that, then the question really remains, you know, will this last or will the values drop? So I'm willing to bet that in the next six to 12 months, we're not gonna see used versions of these cars going for anywhere near under 10% of the value of a new one, which will mean that new ones will still be incredibly in demand and less and less will be in supply over the next 12 months, which will create not necessarily an uptrend, but rather an equilibrium that should be able to be hackable as long as you're willing to assume a 10% loss. Now, in this particular case, I think as a daily driver, this is basically the best convertible on the market, and I don't think it gets better than this. I mean, Rolls-Royce Dawn is a better car than this, but not better than a newer GT. So the way I look at it is, if you have 400K, you really have two options, an older Dawn or a newer GT. And my thoughts are, I would pick a newer GT from a drive standpoint, but it's also, now we're talking about an old generation versus new generation. We'll have to see what Rolls-Royce brings out with the Spectre, what price point that's in, and what the convertible version will do once it's released. But we're still two years out from that. So as it pertains to now, I still think this is the best, uh, the best convertible on the market that you can buy. And I think if you get it in a really cool color, lower it, do some wheel spacers on it, you still can't really have sex in the back seats. You probably could try harder and you're still very limited. I want to show you this just so you understand how limited you are. I'm a 5'7 person, so this gives you a good idea of what you get here. As this comes down, you'll see that I'm very limited. So this is about like me fully in the back seat. Now that means that the wind hits me in my face. I can sit here, but I'm not comfortable here. And this is with the seat, not exactly where it would be if I was driving. So assuming you have a person that's taller than 5'7 driving, you're already basically getting your knees hit on the seat, but it's doable if you're gonna go take someone from place A to place B. I don't even know why they have cup holders here. I wouldn't really sit here, but it's just not doable from a, I'm gonna be here more than 10, 15 minutes. Maybe if you're all going out to lunch, it can work. Otherwise, I just don't see it working. But that is my personal opinion. Now, some basic options, if you are going to be, I'm gonna try to get out of here if I even can, but some basic options that you wanna be buying no matter what, of course, is the premium audio, the better seats, all the shit inside is an absolute must. And one final thing I would recommend buying, no matter what, is the ambient lighting feature, which is absolutely breathtaking at night and contours the back and the front in a way that I've never seen before. Truly done a, they, they've really outdone themselves with this interior and they've outdone themselves with the experience. And I think that's one of the reasons why I'm willing to bet that these cars don't drop that much over the next year or so. After that, uh, time will be the judge of that. But for now, I think it's safe. Or, you know, worst case, I can afford to lose 30, 40 grand, so it's not a big deal. But I wanted to basically bring you here to kind of understand the car, take a look at it. More content, of course, as I spend more time with it. I've only spent about 50 miles on the car. So as I put two, 3,000 miles on the car, I'll give you a much better idea for how I feel about it, how I can live with it, and if it's a good place to be or not. Uh, again, if you want to see more reviews like this, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And uh, make sure you click the link in the training if you want to learn why I'm so confident that I can drive this and lose close to no money or and try to break even. And in many cases, how I'm using the factors to predict the markets, they're in the link in the description for you to learn how to hack cars. Uh, basically taking your 10-year dream of ownership into a 90-day reality, which is very much possible. We've done it for over 20,000 people now and we can do it for you too. But one last thing I'll leave you with, I'd love to know in the comments if you think there's a better GT out there that is a convertible, because this would rank in the same money as the Aston Martin DBS, uh, and this would rank in the same money, of course, as the old Rolls-Royce Dawn. So you tell me between those three cars, is this a better car than the DBS? It's very much aligned to what it does. It's very much aligned with the power it has. So you tell me what is or isn't a, co a competitor to this and which would you pick? Write in the comments and I'll catch you next time on Exotic Car Hacks.